Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. And we're going to begin melody picking today. And if you haven't done melody picking and you've been playing auto harp for a while, you might know what it feels like to feel a little stuck. Because maybe you're playing chords pretty well now and you want to move on, but you're kind of stuck in a rut. I always advise people to start melody picking from the very beginning. So if you are a beginning auto harpist, now's the perfect time to start melody picking. You don't have to play just chords for a while. As a matter of fact, it's to your advantage to play melody from the very beginning. So when we play melody with the auto harp or any auto harp playing, there's really only three different kinds of ways that we touch the auto harp. One is a pluck with one finger, and it could be any one of your fingers that you would do that with. Another one is the thumb alone, and it might be a big strummer, it might be a pluck with the thumb. And the other is called a pinch, where you play the thumb and the finger together. And that's the three different ways to play the auto harp and we kind of mix those up all the time. And melody is played all three different ways. And I recommend playing melody all three different ways from the very beginning. A lot of teachers will teach you pinching or they'll teach you plucking, but they won't get into the thumb. Sometimes it's because those teachers haven't learned to play melody with their thumb yet. I recommend playing melody with the thumb from the very beginning especially if you want to play Carter family songs because they play melody with their thumb in their playing. It's their style and their sound to play what's called thumb lead. So I'm going to teach you all, di all three. I'm going to move my camera down so that you can see what I'm going to be doing with my left hand. Now if you're a left-hander, obviously you're going to be playing these with your right hand. And you might have them on the table, you might have a different orientation, um, but it doesn't really matter. The, the basic rules are the same. We're going to start by playing only two chords. And in this case, we're going to use A minor and G. Now those could be different places depending on how your harp is set up. And you might use different fingers than I do, but for me, I'm using my index finger on A minor, and my middle finger on G. And we're going to start, let's start with pinching, all right? We're going to go, we're going to pinch a small area of the harp, like about an inch and a half, two inches, starting on A minor. And then we're going to move up a little bit with this hand and change chords with this hand. And then we're going to change back with this hand and move up a little further. Don't worry, I'm going to show you these separately. So here's what your left hand starts doing. I call it toggling. Step, 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 step. It's almost like walking. And this hand does this and goes up a few, like an inch at a time, and then back down and back up. And so when you put them together, now try it with just plucking. And don't worry if you're getting too many strings, it'll sound like this. All you have to do is focus in a little tighter and use a smaller motion with your finger so that you grab less strings. And the size of our strokes just influences the way our music is going to sound and at times I play with broad strokes and at times I play 
with little strokes. It's just sort of like a painter using wide brushes or little narrow tiny brushes for detail. Now let's try it with our thumb, okay? Same difference. Now I want you to mix it up and don't change chords every single time. So you might, let's do pinching again, and you might go change the rhythm a little bit. Now I'm just making this up as I go along. I want you to have fun with this. Sometimes melody moves by steps up and down and sometimes it moves by leaps and when we stay on the same chord bar and move our hand we leap when we step with our left hand and move this hand then we step now Let's try something major in the major keys. In the majors, we're going to start with two buttons, and we're going to play Ode to Joy by Beethoven. This is how it goes. might notice that I stepped most of the time. There's only a couple of places where I stayed and jumped or leapt. All right. But I'm going to give you a string of 15 letters and I want you to write them down. Okay. So you can pause the video and go get a pad of paper and a pencil. This is what I want you to write down. G, G, D7, G, G, D7, G, D7, G, G, D7, G, G, D7, D7. I'm going to read that back just so that you can proofread what you wrote. G, G, D7, G, G, D7. G, D7, G, G, D7, G, G, D7, D7. Here's what that sounds like. And of course I'm using G and D7. This one's G, this one's D7. And that's the only help I'm going to give you in figuring out the chords to this tune. I'm going to let you figure out using your ear what the rest of it is, okay? Because part of the skill is finding it in your ear, but you can play the whole tune with just those two buttons. And in the 
middle part of the tune, the part that goes. You'll notice that there are a few more leaping parts where you stay on one chord. All right. So that's Ode to Joy with two buttons. But most of your melody playing in the majors, which is where you're going to play about 80% or 90% of your tunes are going to be major. You're going to end up using three buttons and I've put that off until now. So what I want you to do is I want you to move whatever finger was on the D7, put your your one finger on the G, the other finger on the D7. Now move the D7 button finger to regular D. And use your third finger, whichever one that is, for G, okay, or for C, excuse me. So you're using three buttons, okay, G, D, and C. Probably with your setup, you're going to have your middle finger on G, your ring finger on D, and your index finger on C. But again, if you're a lefty, that might be different depending on how your buttons are set up. All right. Now, I'm not going to give you the formula for playing with three buttons, but you're going to find out after you've learned to play Ode to Joy with two buttons, when you start playing with three, there's some notes that are no longer on your D7 on your because your D bar is no longer a D7 it's just a D you have to pick up those chords from the C bar okay and I'm gonna let you figure that out as part of your learning experience there's only three buttons in the tune okay and so it's a lot simpler than it may seem and with practice you're going to get it. And with practice, you're going to get it in your ear. You're not going to have to figure out every melody and write down all the single chord names like we did before. You know, G, G, D7, G, D7, G, G, D7, G. You won't have to do all that. You're going to get it in your ear, and pretty soon your fingers will lead you, and your ear will lead you, and it will leave your thinking out. But until you get to that place, it's going to take a little practice and a little patience. Okay? But that's the beginning of melody playing. And play around with that minor stuff too, the A minor G. You can do it in other keys too. You just move your finger over and do like E minor D. Or you might do D minor C. And just have fun going to the Middle Ages. just make it up as you go along. You can do the same thing with the, the G and the D7. And G, D, and C. All right? That's my introduction to melody playing. If you are interested in finding books that have all of the melody chords spelled out, first of all, I don't recommend it. I want you to get it in your ear and figure out how to do it by ear and by touch. It's not that hard. But there is a lot of auto harp books on the market that break this down and show you all of what's called the melody chords for every note in the melody. And there's one that I like to recommend because it's from a small-time publisher and there's a lot of tunes in it. All right, it's thicker than most books. And it is from the Dulcimore Gathering 
Um, it's compiled by a man named Bill Schilling, and it's BillSchilling.org. The website is extremely confusing, um, but you want to make sure to get the Auto Heart book, not the Dulcimer book. In this Auto Heart book, everything is in the key of D. We just played in the key of G. The key of D is D, A7, and G, or D, A, and G. But you'll learn how to move the songs into other keys that are on your harp just by moving your fingers over one button. You're in a different key. So it's pretty easy to do, and it's a great book. I will put the link for it down in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to my video blog here, please do so because you'll know immediately when I launch a new video and you can um, continue to learn with me. If you want to learn in private lessons, we can do that right online through Skype or through Facebook chat or any of the other methods there are for getting together online and uh, I'd be glad to do that with you and you can go to my website the link is in the notes howweeks.com and also you will find on my website links to purchase my auto harp CD which is called auto harp revealed in cloud so thanks for tuning in I'm Hal Weeks and I'll see you next week.